the effects of an NDE. Hey guys, so I want to do a quick little video on uh, the effects of, you know, having an ND. A lot of people kind of are like, oh, well, that's cool. Tell me about your story. But what they don't realize is, and a lot of people are like, well, I want to have one, but it's not as simple and easy as you may think. No. <laughs> um, it, and although it's cool and people may want one and they don't have experience and they can't relate to you, um, you know, it, it's what we don't look at or what you want to know is that you know you have of course your own level of uh, struggles and, and understanding on the level of being the human conscious in a 3d but then you also when you have the ndd nde uh, now you have something on top of that and that's <laughs> um the understanding of what's there um versus what's here and kind of being in the middle um between here and there and to be able to see it from that perspective, which can bring a lot of struggle, uh, you know, on that if we're willing to go into that. And so I know because I, I've had the struggle and the struggle, and it comes up every now and then. So it's not always, you know, something that you would maybe want to uh, wish you had, <laughs> um, because you do have to go through some stuff, you know, having that because. You know, being on the other side, now you have the experience of being love. Um, and then come back here, which is the absence of love for the experiences. And you have differentiating, um, differential uh, between that for reference. Um, so you understand what's going on there, and then you understand what's going on here. And then you see it as coming together and how it's separate and how this is and how this plays out and how this is. Um, and just to kind of get that clear um because when you're in both worlds uh it's not always clear and so sometimes you know it is clear so to contemplate that and to put things into perspective with that understanding from both worlds um to make sense for you um in this little to limited mind of ours um and to experience and i'll say that in my videos it's like trying to put that into words for understanding on the level that we're on on, on the 3d level um, to comprehend it and to understand it from that perspective from that side um, and understanding is not always easy right and so the other thing is and there's a couple things so a lot of times you may we may struggle with coming back because it's all love on that side right and so from having the experience of lack um, to love, you know, it's kind of like, okay, why did I come back? <laughs> you know, why did I choose to come back? And we forget that sometimes. Um, I know in my experience, I forgot uh, why I chose to come back, but they reminded me just the other day. So I was struggling hard. I'm like, why? Because um, although there's beauty and love here, it's just not the same as over there. And it's like, why did I choose to come back again? Uh, what was the purpose of that? Why, why did I choose that? Um, and it can lead you down like, um, like a, a little bit of a rabbit hole there. You can sometimes, uh, people who have had near death experience get into deep depression and suffering. And some of them, uh, they just are in the, in the space of, you know, uh, they just kind of disappear off the face of the earth and they just kind of go in hibernation and they don't participate. Um, so it's 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 kind of a mixture of you know the experiences what that results with when people do have the near death experiences now some of them actually will do what they need to do you know as far as being teachers and those who share their information their journeys um, of the near death experience um, from the other side to help other people so you have all different scenarios and how we need to but i did go through the little bit of you know um I, I was in such this, you know, I have spent like 10 years in this nonstop going uh, from the near-death experience, helping people, doing this, doing that, doing that. And then I came into like this, okay, downtime. <laughs> so I was like, why did I come back? <laughs> you know, because part of me was like, well, sometimes uh, people cannot uh, relate to what you're talking about so are you being helpful and so I started feeling like I'm not being helpful to people um, 
and what I, when I was doing and sharing. And at the time I was working at, um, you know, the addiction clinic. Um, and I just wasn't, I was like, I came into the realization that I wasn't really being helpful, you know, at that point. And maybe it was just those, um, uh, I want to say the um, collaboration of, you know, that topic, you know, the addiction field, you know, and those who were um, participating, you know, in uh, drug abuse or abuse or sexual abuse or whatever it was because they can't relate to me from where I am and they are. So I wasn't being any helpful to them um, from the level where I was. And so I found myself trying to help from a place that I was at to a place I couldn't help because of where they were and they couldn't, we couldn't relate, right? And so I felt like I wasn't reaching them and then I was, I was just kind of like, okay, this is hopeless, <laughs> you know? And so I kind of left the field, um, not to mention there was some other things going on um, at that place that wasn't um, very ethical, which didn't resonate with me because um, there were, uh, you know, counselors and stuff like that kind of participating in what people were coming there to get healed on. And so I was like, yeah, this isn't, this isn't good. You know, a lot of times um, people who are helping people uh, with counseling in those areas um, of life um, have either been there themselves. And so they have the experience, um, you know, uh, maybe being, um, no longer there or they've evolved out of that and they've been clean or you know they have overcome that and so they're there and they have that experience I haven't really uh, my surroundings uh, was my uh, the family that I had been born into um, participating in those behaviors um, so I had it from that perspective but not me per se myself right not to say that I haven't in a past life but in this lifetime, no. Um, but it's there in the genetics and the genes because if it's in my experience, and at some point it was, whether it was from my parents um, or somehow related uh, for it to be in the experience to help me um, from that point of view. But I found myself being a near-death experiencer that um, I just wasn't um, reaching them and they weren't really wanting to give up their... Uh, their identity or their belief systems or what they were doing. And I, and I have to say that like, it doesn't help with like the AA program because what that does, it actually um, reconfirms for them that they are an addict. And so when you reconfirm that you're an addict, uh, you keep playing from that place. Um, you're not able to let go of that identity and the identity serves you for a purpose. And so when you keep saying, and reminding yourself that you are, then you are, instead of reminding yourself that you are love and that you're in a better place. And then, right. And so you got to switch that. And so it wasn't very helpful. I was in a place where I was trying to make change where change wasn't allowing and accepting for it. Right. And so I left. Um, so um, kind of a lot of stuff going on in that situation, but um, not to go off on that topic. Um, but yeah, I was finding myself in a place where, you know, I wasn't able to help or serve um, anyone. So kind of moving out of there. Um, and then it's hard to find your place. You know, where do I fit in now? Right. And not that I always fit in. I always felt growing up that I was adopted or, you know, why am I with this family? <laughs> you know, obviously, I, for some reason, I'm here with this family learning from this environment, this experience and um, trying to make sense of that. Um, you know, prior to the near-death experience, but when you have a near-death experience, it's like being born again. <laughs> um, not like in religion, but to yourself, right? You're coming back in from a different perspective now, um, which is being home and source. So it's like having a new whole life, right? And so trying to navigate that is not always easy for a near-death experiencer. And I don't know if that's other near-death experiencers, um, experience, but I know it's mine. And so I went from a tenure of, you know, helping people, like having a strong desire to help people and then kind of just going, Boop, <laughs> you know, cause it wasn't helping. I've in different situations. I was trying to put myself into this box or this frame, fit myself in there, um, wasn't working. So I had to step out of that so I can be where I can help people. And so what is that, you know, and so trying to find your footing um, from being a near-death experiencer. 
is like life changing, right? You have to find where you do fit in, right? And so changing that perspective of what is here and what's here, um, now where am I um, on the timeline? Um, and so that was kind of a little bit of a rocky road there and finding my, my footing. Um, but you can go down rabbit hole and be in deep depression, you know, from being and having the near death experience. And maybe they can't function well because you do bring information back from you further side. And if you can't, you, if you can't ground yourself and work through it, um, you may not have the awareness or you may end up going and getting, you know, uh, help from a psychologist or a counselor or medicated. Um, so a lot of things can happen, you know, um, in the result of having a new death experience. So to actually want to have one, um, you may want to <laughs> question that um, because it's just adding on to what you're already dealing with, with being here. It's just another level of layer um, of awareness added to it. And though it's you you know leveling up to a higher consciousness, a higher state of being, um, in that awareness, it's not always. Um, you have to be ready. Let's just put it that way, um, and it's kind of you have to be ready um, on an evolutionary uh, space and um, able to maneuver through it and be ready and not give up and be like a warrior, um, and then just to keep going. Um, and then just to keep pulling yourself up every time you start feeling like you're going uh, down, you know. And so there's a lot to being and having the experience. It's not just all um, rose-colored glasses. Well, you know, oh, you know. But a lot of people think, you know, the near-death experience is like a joyride. I mean, it can be, but it depends, you know, what is the after result. Because when you bring back some information for like me, like, you're more open and exposed to everything and you can feel everything and you you know people's thoughts at least for me and so i had you know uh my intuitive abilities prior to but they weren't as strong as they are now because i've had been on the other side i've kind of been blown open not to mention just the near-death experience but i went through the kundalini and so a lot of other experiences um but being more open <laughs> to things you um have the ability uh, and your like intuitive psychic abilities, channeling abilities are way more open than they used to be. And so that's another thing you have to work through um, in the process. If you've already been open, it's gonna be like you're, it's doubled, right? And so um, that's another thing. So <clears throat> you may not know, okay, is this my thought or is this their thought? Is this my feeling or is this their feeling? You know, where am I? What am I doing? Where am I fitting in? So you have all this stuff going on, trying to navigate that after coming back from your death experience. And then depending on your experience, you know, do you have the physical ailments uh, that you have to work through too, right? Depending on how you had the in your death experience. And so you might have to recuperate from whatever created that uh, near death experience. And so you want to be able to work on that as well. So there's a lot of things going on that a near death experiencer has to uh, work through and deal with. And it's not just all, um, you know, hearts and, you know, bliss and all that, you know, it's, it's, it's something to definitely, you know, consider when you're saying, you know, um, you know, I want to have a near-death experience, right? So it's a lot on top of what we're already experiencing here in this form. And it's not that um, you're kind of, le it's you're leveling up, but it's not that you're better than another person. It's just where you are in the stage of evolution, evolving into higher consciousness where you have the ability, um, the structure, that, uh, the framework to do that because you have the abilities um, to actually receive the information, to follow the guidance, to... Um, work through it, the capabilities uh, that has been given you through your life um, experiences from the whole timeline, you know, from your past to your present. And so if you don't have those likelihood of you having a near-death experience um, as part of your life, life is um, at that lifetime is very slim. Um, and I always say that basically because if you're not ready, you're not going to give be given something you're not ready for. Um, and if you are ready for it, you're going to receive it, <laughs> you know, and it's to level you up to a higher level of consciousness. And so is like the Kundalini. If we're at that space, 
you know, we have the ability to do that. And so from my <laughs> near death experience, you know, the, went through a lot of different things. So like the uh, shedding integration of the ego to the um, near death experience, being on the other side, coming back, doing some self work, healing myself, going through counseling. So I had the understanding of counseling, mental um, coping, uh, emotional coping skills that I needed to evolve through that period of time was a whole 10 year period. And then being guided to go work and maintain and work on building boundaries of my psychic abilities, um, you know, working on the intuitive abilities, the mediumship channeling. I had all that um, set in place. I had that as part of my journey, the meditation, the yoga, the healthy eating, the cleansing the body. So that was my whole journey through the past to help me to get to where I am today so I can maintain and maneuver through it um, because you are guided. Um, and along the path, and that's how that evolved for me. It's like you're not alone on the journey when you go through these things. And if you're open and aware to it, you will receive the guidance. So, for instance, when I had the Kundalini, you know, I had guidance all through that. And I was being guided what to do, you know, who to speak to, who not to speak to, who to talk to, who not to talk to. And I followed the guidance, right? And so, you know, you don't want to worry about if you are somebody who's going through it or working through it and just keep going. You know, it, there's a lot to it beyond, you know, oh, you know, the bliss and thinking that, you know, it's a joy ride to go through the near death experience and how I wish I was that. But it's great that you have that desire because it's planting a seed for you to have it at some point and you just evolve through um, to where and when you're ready, you will have it. Right. And so somebody has posed the question, you know, well, what, you know, term is a factor why do some people have it and some people don't it's just where you are on the journey right but know that there's a lot involved in that and so you definitely want to be ready uh, just like anything in life it's just a <laughs> a higher level of being <laughs> being ready um, than everyday life right and so if we can't deal with everyday life being here we're definitely not going to be able to deal with something like that right and so we have to be ready you know for that um and again, it's just motivating through that because like if you're <clears throat> being blown open for your um, intuitive abilities um, that you already possess and it's going to be magnified and you're not understanding it fully or you don't have the guidance or teacher and you're not following the steps um, of the path, then you may not know what's your thought, what's their thought. You're picking up on other things um, and you're, it can be very confusing right? And so you need to have the ability and awareness and to be ready uh, to move, maneuver through that. Um, and usually we do plan those um, on the other side when you're going to have it in which lifetime you're going to have it. So that is part of it. Um, so nothing happens in vain. Everything that happens for a reason or purpose when it's happening in which lifetime it's happening because we choose it, right? There's no not choosing anything. Uh, we choose everything from the time of the past life to the present lifetime in between everything that's going on um, and that's just the way that's been created uh, we have free will on all different levels um, and i know a lot of people will make it out to be well your will is not as sourceful but your source will is sourceful because it's been given to you and your choosing of it is accepted and allowed by source because you're the one that's going to fulfill it you're the fulfilling prophecy of who you are uh, in your own awareness and what you're doing and experiencing and you're creating from that place, right? And so um, there's no forgiveness because there's no forgiveness needed, <laughs> right? It's all been planned and created and coordinated the way that it is for the reason it is, right? There's nothing, everything is perfectly divine and orchestrated. I did a video on that. Um, so. So other, and, and then, you know, you, it's like being born again, and then you're having to find your new fitting, where you fit in, you know, and so coming back, I didn't feel like I fit in to anybody or anywhere, and I couldn't talk to anybody about it. Um, I didn't know that anybody else <laughs> in my, how to uh, relate to that until, you know, I started finding and being led to, as a support system, you know, finding on YouTube other people who are having those experiences and they're sharing it. And so I was like, okay, there are people out there that are having these experiences, it's not just me. Um, and so that's helped me uh, move through it. You know, um, uh, one of them is by an uh, Alex, 
I forget his name, um, Next Level Soul uh, YouTube. So if you haven't checked it out, check that out. Um, not promoting, but that's helped me evolve because uh, he has on there people who've had near-death experiences and helped me um, to connect and relate because where you are on the, on the path and journey, you need to have that support system. Um, so that's important. Um, so that way you understand and know um, that you're not alone. Um, you're not um, like uh, crazy, you know, things like that. Um, especially with all these, uh, the transition from the physical to mention to the other side, which is, you know, uh, an illusion and then the, the truth of illusion. <laughs> so you can kind of feel off balance there. And so unless you can get your ground and like I mentioned, you know, being and finding a support system is important. So that helped me in my journey so that I didn't um, really get into depression um, because you need a place to fit in, right? We're all here um, and the, the, this side is kind of like separation because we're able to uh, see and feel and uh, experience from this perspective. So it's for us to do that, we have to be separate from our true self, our source, our love. Right. And so to have that separation, a lot of people may feel lonely, right, or appear lonely. Um, but, as, you know, I started going into where, OK, I need to <laughs> I need to just be by myself. Like I it's just I had to be like get it my ground and I had to be isolated by myself and not interacting with a lot of people. So I was able to get myself back into the space of uh, being grounded and where I am contemplating, where I could find my footing. Um, so there's a lot going on <laughs> beyond, beyond, you know, the idea of having a near-death experience um, to, to think about and contemplate. Um, and then also, um, kind of looking here, I wrote some of these uh, things down I wanted to touch on because, like, of course, um, I can get into a lot of, of stuff there. But I found myself, like, where I couldn't you know, like I was saying, talk about things to people and share my experience because they weren't able to meet me there and they kind of didn't connect and it makes it. And so you had nobody really to talk to. So it can be a lonely place for some people if you're not able to find that. So that's why another reason uh, that the, you know, finding a support and other people who have had that for you, whether you can go to like conventions, um, there are you know, the YouTube channels, uh, other people, their stories, they're sharing them. And it can help, you know, a lot. And so, you know, even if you're just here and you have like problems with um, diabetes or whether it's abuse or it's, there's always support systems for no matter where you are on the journey. And that includes near-death experiencers <laughs> because there are other people who have experience. And that brings me to just mention, you know, if there's one, there's more. <laughs> if one person has had an experience, so has another because it's a relative thing. Uh, there's no where you're only one and done, right? So there's always one that's going to have a relative to it. So it's not always the same or a match, but it's relative so you can connect to it. And so you're never alone, right? It's been set up like that. So we have choreographed it to the point where whatever experience you have, there's going to be someone else who's had a relative experience. So you're always going to have somebody that draws you together, the energy and vibration. Um, so that way you can um, work through it, right? Because there is no absence of an experience. There's only another experience like it, similar uh, to it, which is the conjunction of being to create more of it in its awareness once it's been created. And so when you create something uh, that you're intending to create from the other side, you know, there's other and more to go along with it. And so there's these different realities of constructs that are being created to help you maneuver through it. And so you're never alone. You're never um, not with something or someone or on the other side, you know, without help. Um, there's always something for you. There's always a support for you. Uh, whatever that's going to be for ex existence. I talked about this a little bit before, you know, um, you know, whenever uh, you might have two people experiencing abuse, you know, physical abuse, um, it's going to be the same experience, but different players in the play. So one might have been from a mother, one might have been from a father, but it's going to be the experience of the abuse, which then will attract each other to each other. So you can work through the play of it and have support and know that you're not alone. 
So there, it's very supportive, uh, the process of evolution. It's very supportive for you. Um, that's why everything is for you, not against you, right? And so the, for that reason, it helps you to evolve through it if we're able to look at it and see it from that perspective instead of it being against you, right? And so <laughs> it's the reality in uh, your suffering that creates the, uh, you know, the world is against me kind of um, deal, but maybe that's because you need to go there and experience that um, as a part of your evolution <laughs> and journey um, to see from that viewpoint. And that, and that is based on you, uh, your view and your soul and how everything's orchestrated, what you intended, your purpose, um, you know, for coming in into this lifetime, right? And so again, everything is purpose, you know, purposeful, um, everything is divinely connected and for the right reasons. Um, there's no paradigm that's against you on any level. <laughs> it's all for you, uh, which is the, the amazing, great thing. And it's just about loving the journey. And I was reminded about that this morning again, too, to, to really love the journey. And so <laughs> that brought me back into the space of love and presence. Um, along with uh, seeing, you know, the the people at the center that I did a video on uh, where they were helping load up cars for food to help other people, right? And so putting yourself in that space um, generates the love for the other side that you get to experience when you're on the other side by what you're doing here. Um, it feeds itself. It's like a feeding generation of love that you experience on the other side from being here, which may not come from love because from the, the amount of love that you're not being creates the amount of love that you're going to be over there through generation of it because the experience of not being with love and uh, lack of love is helping to create love to go there right it's all it's the, and it, it may not make sense to you um, but when you're on the other side and you see it it, it it makes sense so again trying to put everything into perspective for the human consciousness to make sense of um, in that awareness and through what my teachings are from the other side uh, what they share with me and my channeling and downloads to help relate um, the information to you and so for me to fit into you know the nine to five job um, the counseling and trying to help from that perspective just wasn't fitting in now although i was trying to fit in it just wasn't um and that created a resistance for me and so I had to leave because uh, it wasn't being helpful um, so I had to find a place you know and things that um, where I can fit in and make um, bring help um, and understanding so the life coaching right is, is my avenue <laughs> so I do sessions uh, to help people who are awakening transversing, um, having the near-death experiences. Um, I do readings because I have the intuitive abilities. I'm able to channel information. So I do uh, sessions. Um, they are online. They're not in person. Sometimes I'll go to an event and do an in-person um, session, but not really because um, even then, you know, it's very overwhelming with all that going on. And to be in that space, you know, I want to be one-to-one -one with that person when I do do the one-to-one -one sessions. Um, so not to have anything else, you know, affect that. So, and then um, on top of all that, um, because you can't bring everything back with you from the other side, you can only bring back so much information at a time. So you can ground and balance and maintain yourself in here while still being connected there for it to all work out and in its evolution. Um, so you can be of help to others. Um, you'll have these things that will pop up and trigger, and it'll trigger your memories. Um, and so like the other day, I'm going to share a video on that, but it triggers some things as I was doing writing and channeling. Um, but it, it comes back through little pieces by pieces, and then you have to put that in together, kind of like a puzzle, okay? Um, this may, you know, and then working that out, right? And so how does that work together and how does it apply? And then how to share that, you know, uh, information if you're choosing to share it. Some people just don't share it and they just go and live themselves up in a cave or a mountain somewhere, <laughs> you know, and just be by themselves. Um, or they may just write books instead of doing it publicly. Or maybe they go out and be public, you know, and share their information that they're receiving. But you, you get the information in droves, you know, downloads, um, 
every now and then it's sparse. Sometimes it's constant. Um, so the more I do this, the more I'm writing, the more I'm channeling, the more it's just flowing through. The information just comes through. And a lot of times I don't even realize what I'm saying because it's not really when I'm in the flow, it's not me speaking. It's either my guides, angels, or source speaking through me um, and to bring forth that information. And so I'm like, Sometimes I'm like, oh, what did I just say? <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not even in the awareness sometimes of what I'm saying. And sometimes you can understand that and see that when I'm talking and sharing information on the videos where it may be me and then it's it's not. And so I'm tuning in and out um, with the flow, depending on, and I may speed up or I may slow down, depending on what that is and where I am on that stream of conscious, if it's just flowing through. Um, but you have the, the little downloads every now and then and it's like fitting that in because you can't have all that at one time come into the human concept um it, it's just too much you won't be able to hand your mind won't be able to handle and process it all at once um so it's little bits and pieces um for us to share you know if we're choosing to do that um and we're not required to but then that brings me to okay information that we're sharing now where are we sharing it from right are we sharing it from um our limited space our beliefs or we are are we sharing it from the other side because uh we now now that we have the experience of being on their sides we are uh, kind of what they call um truth speakers right because you have the knowledge from source to speak the truth and not from the illusion right and so because you have both right? We have the ability to speak truth into the illusion, which heals and generates a whole different level of awareness here that brings it forth true to be true in the awareness of others, right? And so we are true speakers of source. Um, and for that, <laughs> that is huge undertaking. Um, and a lot of worthiness have to go into that. You, you have to at least for me, I struggle with worthiness on that. Um, and I don't want to say that I'm 100% there, you know, because who am I uh, from my human perspective, Laura, to to be a true, a true speaker, you know, from source, um, from there into this realm, right? Um, and it took me a while for my mind and for me to get on board with that and to understand it. And it's... Um, it's all about worthiness, you know, having the worthy, worthiness and <laughs> the, to level yourself up and to be a match to that and to share the divine information is like an honor. Um, and the worthiness to, to fulfill that, uh, not just for yourself, but for other people. So it's a big undertaking. Um, and although we may try to minimize a near-death experience, um, or, you know, as far as saying, oh, well, you're, uh, you're wrong, you're psychotic, and people want to try to negate you, um, which I've had that experience just a few days ago. Um, it's just because they can't meet you at that level of awareness, right? And so they try to negate you to bring you down um, into their space um, of reality. So then they can relate to you, and so then you become a match to them. But if you don't, uh, and um, Abraham, Tick talk, or him, Abraham Hicks talks about that is where you continue to maintain your space. She's been part of, and Abraham's been part of my journey, um, as you can see from my videos, because I mention them periodically, and that's where I've got some of the information from to help me to understand um, where I am on the evolution of, of this experience, uh, navigating it um, for me and to fill in the pieces. So it's like I have all these different pieces going on, you know, this realm, that realm, <laughs> we have the guides and spirit guides um, that have come into my life. Um, so Matt Kahn, um, Abraham Hicks, um, Sadhguru, you know, they all have played a part and role in it, bringing in different aspects to help me fill um, the gaps um, and to help me maneuver through this. So uh, I've definitely been guided, uh, divinely guided through the whole journey here. Um, but with being a true speaker is from the perspective of source and living up to that potential <laughs> takes worthiness. And so find your worthiness is a lot of work. Um, am I worthy to do it? You know, am I, and it's about me. It's not about anybody else. And it's once you find your worthiness that you are fulfilling that, 
that's, I don't want to say prophecy, but that position in that role, then you're taking on a lot of responsibility and, um, uh, you know, purpose, you know, divinely um, to be able to speak the truth from the other side, whereas a lot of people are here um, in the illusion of the 3D world speaking from concepts that they know nothing about, but they think they do because that's been their experience or where they are on that level of awareness, right? And so for a person to come through from the other side to bring through that information from the other side to here, it can be a conflict. Um, so it took a while, um, and so I am uh, coming out of the closet <laughs> working on this um, to share my information, understanding, and how that has been, and it's being given to me to share to you to help on that level of awareness. And so from that point of view, being a true speaker, we're actually healers, right? And that was a drop-in to share this morning. Um, we are um true speakers which are healers right and so i am a healer uh on different levels not just energetically mentally emotionally physically spiritually but in speaking truth because when you speak truth you are healing the illusion right and so near-death experiencers are healers and they may not look at themselves um, as that and have that understanding but they are healers right because you're clearing up the illusion with the truth from source Right? You're bringing back the truth from the illusion to the illusion to bring that and to change the energy and vibration of it to heal it to a higher level of consciousness. So we can all evolve, right? When source brings in information through who we are and we're divinely connected, whether you're a psychic, a medium, a channel, um, if you're a near-death experiencer, you're an energy healer, we're all evolving through that higher consciousness and we're bringing and sharing the information here so we can all evolve. Um, at the same time, maybe not always rapidly, but at the time that needs to heal in the way that needs to heal. And so as we are evolving, uh, we are able to um, change, you know, where we are at the moment, right? And so we are continually evolving and changing. And I did a view on uh, evolving, so you can check that out. Um, but being a true speaker is healing. You're a healer. You're a divine healer, right? And so there's different levels of healing. You can do energy healing. I've done energy healing, energy mapping, um, body mapping, you know, whatever it is that you're doing as far as healing. And so there's so many healers on a certain level. And so I went through those stages and I'm like, okay, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. And it's like my soul was like, okay, this isn't working. This is not it. This is not working. This is not it. And so here I am. Um, sharing the information in this way um, on this level of being a healer right so the true speaker um, from the other side and so that's kind of where i am fitting into in the realization of it right and so when you don't speak your truth what i want to say about that is we're actually creating a lie and although no lie exists you're creating separation because what's not truth is separate from it which is a separation but we call it a lie. So you guys know it as a lie. Um, and that's why they say don't lie because you're creating a separation from truth. And so you're going to be living the lie from where you are, that separation point, which is creating the illusion for you to experience it from that point of view. So when you lie about something, you're starting to separate yourself from the truth, which is source, right? And which is all the different dimensions within itself to bring forth that which it's experiencing to know the lie from the truth. Right? And although all truths are true <laughs> on that level, because when you're in the lie, you think it's true because that's what you think you know and you believe it and so it becomes true. But it's actually a false truth. And so there is no lie. There's only truth. So your truth, which is the human truth, or your, your source truth, which is the true truth, the true north, which is the experience that you're having, that you're creating from either one, which is either limiting or expansion. So the true truth or the truth um, is where you are, depending on where you are on the, the timeline of uh, evolution, which is creating itself in its own its awareness, which is the experience. And so you are where you are on the timeline that you're being that's creating itself where you are, right? So they're same. <laughs> Uh, they're adding into my conversation here. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 
And so when we allow, uh, you know, the illusion to creep in, we're in a lie, um, basically. And it's not that it really exists on the other side, it just exists here. So when I say lie, it's, it's the separation from truth. And so you can see from all the different dimensions in that reality of where you are in the experience, which creates it. And then you create the experience from that point of view, creating it so you can see it. And from that point of view, you're in your own awareness, creating it from that point. Um, which is the view, right? And so a true speaker isn't meaning that you're religious. It doesn't mean that you're speaking from the point of the Bible. You're speaking from the point of source, which is your direct connection, right? And so when you're at that point, um, speaking from there, or you're at the point in the illusion, you're creating the expansion of awareness to all beings, right? So when you're bringing the truth into the illusion, you're helping to transform and bring that awareness here, including love. And that's kind of, I know that was kind of long, <laughs> but I have a lot to say on that. And so what they want to share on it. So, um, yeah, pretty much sums up, you know, the, the points on there. I'm sure there's more, but that's all that they're really wanting to to get out there, you know. And for the, the near-death experiencers, you know, if you've had that, know that, um, you have a purpose in it, and it's where in the play uh, that you, you're you meant to be, you know. And so try not to look at it from a negative point of view, and, it's, and it is going to be maybe a little struggle to get to the point. I know I've been through it, um, and it's been quite a journey, but I'm loving the journey, <laughs> bringing it back to loving the journey. So if you are a near-death experiencer and you're struggling, reach out to me. Um, you need community. Um, I'm a support system. I do coaching sessions. Um, and definitely uh, we can connect and, you know, work through that and evolve um, to get you to a point where um, you're meant to be, right? And so um, just know that you are, are a true speaker. If you've been on the other side and you're coming back to share the knowledge and wisdom, you're a true speaker. Right, so you're a healer on that level. All right. Happy journeys. Thanks for tuning in.